Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. We are just coming or have just escaped one of the hardest economic times of our business lives. Now, today I'm going to be talking about five small business strategies for you to recover, rebuild, and be ready just in case 2020 happens all over again. Now, small business owners can actually adopt these recovery strategies and recover and thrive in the next unpredictable uh, time that is going to come through. I don't know about you, but 2020 was one of the hardest years for a lot of uh, businesses, especially my clients and for um, us as a business too. But we survived. We went through only simply because we have a brand. We have given value to a lot of people and we have always been out there to help others be doing have a happier existence. And I just believe that because we've been doing that in the past, people have also responded in kind. So in the event that 2020 was not one of the best years for you, that doesn't mean it's gone and passed. You now need to be ready for what's to come. And guess what? We are now living through a very uncertain time. And from day to day, it now seems almost impossible to predict what's going to come next. And, um, you know, for love and respect, I heard Bill Gates saying, we haven't started yet. So for you to be ready and if you want to be building a business that's profitable and enjoyable so you can be, do and have a happier existence, I just hope that these five strategies will help you escape the next pandemic or whatever it is that's in store for us. You know, it's, it's really easy to see that the rather dramatic occurrences in 2020 have impacted a lot of businesses of all sizes, not just the small to medium business, but every business, um, you know, of all sizes. Yeah. But the small business was the one that was hit the most. I think there was a study that was done for almost 5,800 small businesses. That's in America, though. It pointed to the fact that smaller companies tend to be financially fragile and then i'm going to try and explain what this actually means because when you're running a business um it is advisable to have at least three months worth of your expensive saved away and if you're doing well try and reach to six months and if you're doing exceptionally well try and go up to 12 months worth. Now, if you would notice in Victoria alone, where I am in Melbourne, we had to stay for over 285 days. And that's an unprecedented time of no business activity in the first world. I mean, obviously, if you're in Africa or someplace where there's wars and things like that, hey, guess what? Grand opening, grand closing. You could get shut down by a missile Oh, a suicide bomb, um, you know, that would have just erupted. But we have had so much progress in the last 50 years such that this just came as a big, big shock to the system, right? So, you know, like I was saying, a lot of small businesses tend to not be financially uh, stable. They're financially fragile, okay, which only really expands the problems that they will face during the times when a national crisis or a pandemic happens again. So it's possible to fully predict the next two or three years that are going to happen because everybody's going going to be in recovery mode. But let me tell you something. There are strategies that can help you as a small business to stabilize and grow and learn from the mistakes of what we did um, in the years leading up to 2020. So let's uh, dive in and discuss the five that I have come up with here. All right. One thing for sure that made us um, jerk up a little bit is we built multiple revenue streams within our business. 
All right. So if you come to Live Long Digital, we obviously do SEO, we do digital marketing, we do social media. We also write content for people and we help people with websites. If you ask me, all of those are different revenue streams. Okay. If people don't want SEO, they might be looking for a website or an e-commerce platform. And each and every one of those is a standalone product that can actually sustain the whole business. So within your um, service provision there, you need to make sure that you're building multiple revenue streams. So if you can't create different products, create different services or different packages or different tiers that appeal to different people and different levels in business. Plenty of content has been compiled on, you know, a lot of revenue streams, especially in the financial sector and how to create them and that you need to have at least seven, um, revenue streams at any given moment. And there's a lot of business experts that tout, you know, the variety of revenue streams that you need to create, um, you know, within your business, just so that you can be financially viable or you can actually be a millionaire. Okay. But of course, everyone wants to be a success. So whether your goal is to be a millionaire or to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, not looking into multiple revenue streams within your business is really going to be a detriment to you. You really want to make sure that you sit back and look at where is my money actually coming from? All right. A lot of businesses that we work with are just built around one single product. And it's nearly, you know, it's nearly impossible to sustain a business with just that narrow focus. Yes, people say you have to have one audience. Yes, they say you have to have one niche, but it doesn't mean you have to be extrapolating your money from one single source. There are more products that you have to sell, okay? If you can maybe package them in such a way that you appeal to different, um, you know, levels of your customers. And the, and the more products you can sell, the more services you can bundle together, the more likely you're able to be a success. Because if the pandemic is affecting, um, you know, smaller businesses, you still have your enterprise clients sustaining you and you're not, um, you know, going out of business just simply because you don't have multiple uh, streams of revenue. But Building these multiple streams of revenue is about more than just selling different products. It's also about marketing from different platforms to different customers or creating passive income where you are not physically able to be. Okay. So potential revenue streams that could be added to your product line include, um, you know, a variety and not limiting yourself to say maybe YouTube videos that pay you in ad, um, you know, in, in advertising, right? And the, these YouTube videos possibly are centering on how to use your products or, you know, putting your brand message out there to yourself and to your employees. Okay. You can also add complementary products, you know, such as tools that are required in order to use your main product. Those can be sold passively and people can just purchase those without requiring any interaction with um, any person um, from your team. You can also include, if you are selling products, you can also include a consulting service and you're appealing directly to the people who want to use that product. So, you know, I, I see IKEA as a missed opportunity that they don't provide a service to help people with those flat packs. Yes, it's easy for you to, um, you know, stack up a lot of furniture in a small warehouse for them, but they haven't thought it through for the customer because at the end of the day, flat packs are good, but half of the time, a lot of people don't have the patience to actually put um, those things together. And if they would include a service or a consulting service or, you know, like maybe videos that people can purchase after they've purchased a piece of furniture, that will be yet another income stream that they are actually missing out on. And guess what? This could also be a service that you can start providing if you are, you know, maybe like a furniture consultant yourself. And you could actually start buying products from Ikea, assembling them and giving people step-by-step -step instructions via video. Okay. Half of the time, you can also maybe have, um, you know, people that sell TVs, you can also provide installation and maintenance services that facilitate the use of your product. So 
Think of it in percentages. If your main product makes, uh, say, up to 80% of your revenue, then if it gets hit by an economic downturn, you've lost 80% of your overall income. But if you have 10 different revenue streams, however, if you lose one, you still have 90% coming in. So those two extremes will actually illustrate how all of these can work for you and how you can put it into practice. And this all depends on how much work you want to put in because we all saw what 2020 could do. It came out of nowhere and it left everybody else, you know, um, out in the open. So there's really no limit to the different types of revenue that you that you can add to your main source at the moment. And it actually depends on the type of business that you run and how you need to show up in your marketing place. Because let me tell you something, you can actually start creating your own market and not depend on what's actually happening out there in the world. Okay. One thing that I also noticed during COVID um, or during this uh, pandemic was there was a lot of grants and funding that was being thrown out there. Not a lot of people had access to it. You know, a very, um, you know, every, every good business owner realizes that there will be good times and there will be bad times in business. And smart business owners are going to be looking for enough funding and they secure it in the right way for the right time to get through the bad times. Okay, this means accurately assessing your needs you know, maybe you're a new business and keep a finger on the pulse of what is to come in the future as you grow. We now know that businesses can be shut down for for years on end. Now that we have this information, what are we going to do in order for us to create financial buffers around us just in case this happens? All right. So your needs won't be maybe as internal, such as paying your overheads or your wages or things like that. Those financial needs should also, you know, continue to change the way you create new products or how you reach new customers and build your business. I advise you do not wait until it's a last minute for you to actually start looking for funding out there. The world has become an uncertain place and having funding will help your company or your business to weather these storms that may come out of notice. All right. During COVID in Victoria, we had the actual pandemic. We had an earthquake. We had weather storms and we had fires all coming in right about at the same time. What if one thing actually totals your business? Right. So keep your funding in place for when you need it. Some people call it a line of credit or some people call it some sort of uh, buffer. Whatever you call it, make sure you know how to reach out for it. And maybe it comes through investors, backers, your family or even savings or maybe through small business loan programs or the government. Whichever way, create an opportunity that you have a buffer or a life line of credit or a life jacket, if you want to call it that. And this could be through your savings. And just make sure you have something like that that is available to you. Now, when I started this podcast, I mentioned that we survived 2020 because we leveraged our branding and we continuously were building loyalty with our audience. One of the main or one of the most important aspects for a successful business is the loyalty of your customers. If you create a brand that is worth of loyalty, it will be that much easier to sustain your company in times of an economic downturn. Guess what? These people will do what they can to keep your doors open. Well, that's if you're allowed to, to open those doors. Now, even if your customers can't shop with you as often as they can, they will recommend other people, all right? Or they will subscribe to whatever you have going on at that particular time. They will still do their best to not turn their back on you. So leverage that loyalty um, in, 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 in ways that obviously not a lot of people that have built their brands can do. And once you have people that are loyal to you, reward them, right? Reward your customers for that loyalty that they are showing you right now. Put maybe a loyalty program into action. Give them rewards for sharing your business with others and really focus on how valuable each and every one of them uh, is, is, is making you live the life that you're living at this moment. Make it personal, all right? Make sure that even in the good times, you're not forgetting your customers because they will be there for you when times get hard. And 
One thing that I encourage is reach out to your audience on social media. Create conversations that, conversations that actually allow them to see your brand as authentic and being there for them. I, I, I promise you, around 90% of customers, they cite authenticity as a deciding factor if they want to engage with the brand that they want to support. So for you to be able to do this, you have to invest in customer service. All right. Now, customer service usually takes a back seat with um, a lot of businesses in terms of strategy. It costs so much money to get new customers than to engage with the customers you already have. Why not take advantage of that person who's already trusted you instead of trying to get more people through the doorway? Like we work with a lot of businesses. I kid you not. When people come to us, they are constantly saying we need new leads. We need new customers. And the first thing that we ask them is, hey, how about the, your existing customers? Are you selling them more stuff or other things that they can, you know, you know, support you with? You know, just like we mentioned earlier on where you need to have maybe multiple st streams of income. What else are you selling your customers? You know, when, it, when somebody buys from you, they have already, you know, trusted you. All you got to do is ask them, would you like fries with that? So you might assume that your customers want to be loyal and you take that for granted, especially if you, you've invested adequate time trying to build those customer relationships and you're marketing to them all the time and reaching out to them on social media. You, you take for granted the people that are actually following you. All right. So that is just getting started. People are busy. They're also looking at what, what else is out there. Constantly be there and don't ever ignore a customer who reaches out. Even if it's for things that are annoying you, the fact that they're not taking it onto the internet to vent their spleen, worship that customer, all right? So if customers have only negative things to say about your business, guess what? Take that as, neg as, as, as feedback. Do whatever it takes to make it right. Because most of the time, if they're telling you you're lucky, all right, they sometimes just take it upon themselves to complain in places where you would never know. And then you start wondering why people are not dealing with you. All right. It's far more expensive to have a disgruntled ex-customer spreading a horror story about what it is that you're doing than to actually just really look after those people and do what's right by them. And one of the best way to do this is just really integrating an excellent customer service system into your website. Just make sure that the real person is looking after that, you know. Yes, you might have so many transactions and so many people that you need to be dealing with that you maybe employ a robot. But try and make so many human interactions with your business as possible, right? If you can't have a service agent standing by all the time, make sure your chatbot is well designed, that it knows how to bring, um, you know, certain people and certain queries to a real human and send acknowledgement messages when you get um, an, an opportunity. Be always in front of your customer. Make them realize and feel that you absolutely care about them more than your profit. And basically make your customers feel like they actually matter to you. Guess what? They're paying you. If they don't matter to you, you won't matter to them. And when the time comes, grand opening, grand closing. And once you have your customers following you, knowing you, liking you, trusting you, you start creating a unique identity. You no longer have to compete with the marketplace. All right? And this is the final key for you to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. You will recover if you have created a unique identity where people can pick you out in a sea of me too producers of whatever product or service that you, you, you're offering in the market then. As you build your customer base, just pay attention to feedback. There are gaps in the market you know, that you can fill in and other indicators to tell what's missing because your customers will constantly be letting you know what you can do for them next. 
And if you have a product with a lot of competition, look at what details can make you stand out from the rest, okay? Some people just make it easy for people to buy from them and then they don't care after that. Maybe your unique selling proposition can actually be defined by the customer service that you give to your audience. Now, along with any unique product, make sure you really, really craft out your own market within any market out there. Create a unique brand identity so that people can remember you when times are tough. Harmonize your message, your visuals, your social media, whatever presence you have in front of your audience and all the aspects so that you create something that is completely distinguishable from all the other Me Too brown box companies out there. And it draws attention. And when you do that, it really creates a personal connection with your viewer and a sense of identity. People are always looking for places where they can belong. Create that place. Let your business be the place where people are coming to. And ultimately, no one knows what might happen to our economy in the next year or the year after or whatever it is. By following the old adage that hope for the best and prepare for the worst, it really isn't a bad idea. So if you make sure that your business is in a position to recover from any potential economic downturn, you can plan for the future and for the successful growth of your business. I viscerally want that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I really want you to gain all the fame, influence, and notoriety that you can within the next two years. So why don't you reach out? Let us know how I can be able to help you because you don't have to sacrifice your income just so that you can do what you love. You can absolutely have both. Let me walk you through my simple step-by-step -step plan and show you exactly how easy that can be. You can find that um, plan when you type in livelongdigital.com.au forward slash OPB. OPB. Now, till next time, bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.